welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject fundamentals of surface engineering and you know we are talking about the third uh, approach of the surface modification wherein a layer of the desired quality of the material is applied over the surface of the substrate so that uh, the improvement in tribological life of the uh, components can be uh, achieved. Now uh, uh, basically now we are talking about the uh, well surfacing related techniques. Uh, we have seen that uh, mm, yeah, the gas welding is one of the process which is uh, used for uh, uh, depositing uh, uh, the layers of the required material which may be in form of nickel or iron based systems. And uh, now uh, uh, we have also talked little bit about the shielded metal arc welding, shielded metal arc welding processes. So, this group of the processes where uh, the welding uh, uh, processes are used to deposit the bead on plate, these are called weld surfacing, where bead on plate is deposited. Uh, in case of the um, uh, shielded metal arc welding processes, one consumable electrode is used and arc is striked between the electrode and work piece and so whatever the electrode uh, melts that is deposited over the surface of the substrate. So, melting of the electrode is uh, uh, will be leading to the application of a layer of the material over the surface of the substrate. Uh, we have also seen that uh, the dilution uh, which is about the change in composition of the metal which is being applied due to intermixing with the base metal and the cooling rate experienced by the molten metal during the solidification. These are the two important uh, technical aspects uh, related with the weld surfacing which affects the quality and performance of the weld surfacing. Uh, so, as far as the shielded metal arc welding process is concerned. Uh, normally like the 5 to 15 percent the dilution is observed, but the dilution is also affected by the kind of the heat input which is being given uh, and especially not just the heat input, but it is the net heat input which is uh, which is given. So, there is a little difference heat input in uh, during the arc welding is obtained from the uh, product of the arc voltage and the current which is being used for depositing the bead on plate. Uh, while the net heat input is obtained by uh, dividing this quantity V i with the welding speed because arc will be travelling continuously during the uh, deposit deposition of the metal. So, e speed is used. So, uh, V i by S gives us the net heat input which is also expressed as H net. So, primarily if we see the arc voltage, welding current and the welding speed, these are the three important welding parameters which will be governing the net heat input and this net heat input will be deciding the extent or the depth up to which melting of the substrate is taking place. In general, increase in H net value increases the depth up to which melting is taking place, which in turn will be increasing the dilution. So, increase in H net increases the dilution as well as it reduces the cooling rate. So, both these are undesirable things and this is the general principle which is applicable across the across all uh, type of the arc based uh, processes where um, the heat is applied for applying or developing a layer of the required quality of material over the substrate. So, what is important here that V i and S are selected properly, so that the dilution is as minimum as possible while melting the sufficient depth of the substrate, so that the good bond between the, the bead uh, and the substrate can be created. Like if the heat input is very less then metal will simply be, be spreading over the, surface, over the surface of substrate and not very good metallurgical bond will be created. So, in this case 
poor bonding may lead to the delamination or removal of the bead. If uh, the melting of the substrate is up to the sufficient depth, then it will be leading to the good metallurgical bonding. So, not very less heat input will be sufficient, but we need the sufficient heat input so that uh, enough melting of the substrate is also taking place apart from the melting of the material which is to be applied. So, that is why there is a need of the optimum heat input, precisely optimum net heat input. So, uh, since the uh, for a given power of the arc which is obtained from V i, uh, when the arc is uh, moved manually the speed will be speed will be changing and therefore, H net will also be changing and that is why we say that control over the heat input, control over the heat input is less in case of the sealed metal arc welding processes. So, how does it affect the things as a whole. Now, that is what uh, we have to see. Now, shielded uh, SMAW process is very extensively used for uh, uh, applying uh, a layer of the material over the substrate over the surface of the substrate for variety of the purposes. So, according to the purpose, the weld surfacing can be grouped as a cladding where very thick layer of the material is deposited and this is primarily used for corrosion resistance related applications where the travelogical component can be expected to perform under the corrosive wear conditions. Then uh, it can be applied for uh, means uh, when the surfacing is applied for increasing the surface hardness by depositing the suitable material it is called hard facing. So, in case of the hard facing here uh, uh, hard materials are deposited over the surface primarily for increasing the adhesive abrasive wear resistance. Uh, it can also be used to uh, for the buttering purpose wherein we want that the weld metal is isolated from the substrate to avoid the metallurgical incompatibility related issues like if uh, uh, these are the two components to be uh, uh, to be joined or or we'll take another example like this is the substrate and we find that substrate and the material to be applied do not have uh, compatibility metallurgical compatibility then we'll be depositing a layer of the material which is compatible with the substrate first and then over this layer we'll be depositing the another material which is to be applied at the surface for a required functionality. So, this uh, the layer which is present between the substrate and the the, uh, the weld surfacing applied at the top this one will be termed as butter layer. And this uh, uh, when, when the butter layer or additional layer is sandwiched between the hard facing layer or, or another surface material layer uh, and the substrate then this is called the buttering. It is also used in welding to isolate the substrate from the like, uh, like these are the two components to be welded. So, one layer will be deposited over the surface of the base metal and a, a layer of the material will also be applied on the surface of the base metal on another, another side. So, now we can use any uh, electrode or the, any suitable filler metal which is uh, which uh, can be used to join the two components together uh, for uh, achieving the required functionality. So, in that case if the filler is applied it will be compatible to the both. So, uh, this is primarily used when the filler and the base metals do not have a metallurgical compatibility then base metal is isolated from the filler by depositing this kind of the butter layers. Uh, there is one more purpose of, uh, uh, of uh, applying the uh, weld surfacing is the reclamation. Reclamation is uh, used just to develop a build up on the worn out components so that the dimensions can be regained after uh, machining out like say this is the initial size of the component, initial new component and after the service it has been 
worn out. So, we will be depositing a layer of the material over the worn out component and after the machining again the regain will be re regaining the, uh, the in initial uh, size uh, original size and shape of the component of uh, which has been worn out. So, the reclamation uh, is a kind of the repair or refurbishing kind of thing, buttering is for the different purpose similarly for hard facing and the cladding. So, each uh, uh, the in all the cases we apply uh, the material over the surface of the substrate for the different purposes and accordingly the different names are given. Now, we will see uh, since the dilution and the cooling rates uh, affect the things uh, affect the performance of the weld surfacing significantly. So, now we will see that effect. Uh, for example, like this is the substrate and we are applying good quality material layer. So, uh, good quality material layer is applied like this using a condition of the voltage say 15. Uh, volt and uh, the current is 140 ampere and welding uh, speed is say 100 mm per minute. So, these are the welding conditions and using which uh, the, the weld bead has been applied. Now, if, if we change the heat input conditions to 160 and to 180 ampere while maintaining the voltage and the welding speed constant then what will be happening that increase in net heat input because V i s this will be governing the H net and if we are increasing i value of i then it will be increasing the H net value and increase in H net value uh, if the earlier the depth of the melting of the substrate uh, was this much then increase in H net value will be depositing the more amount of the metal over the substrate while uh, melting the substrate up to the greater depth and this increased depth of the melting will simply be, so say this was for 140 ampere, this is for 160 ampere and then may, maybe for the deeper melting will be taking place in case of the 180 ampere current rating. So, uh, increasing in depth of the melting will simply be increasing the dilution level means the chemical composition of the surface layer will be modified to the greater extent and this in turn will be compromising with the properties of the surface layers which are being developed. So, there will be degradation, degradation may be in terms of the mechanical properties like hardness and accordingly the wear resistance is also compromised. We will take up one example where in like iron 4.5 percent chromium and 2.5 percent carbon was used. So, this is these are typical iron chromium um, carbon uh, hard facing systems. So, in this case if say the the hard facings were deposited using the three level of current like 140 ampere, 160 ampere and 180 ampere and then try to see how does the behavior of the hard facings change as a function of the current. Then what we see that uh, uh, that uh, uh, like if uh, such kind of the hard facings are tested um, by the abrasive wear test then as a function of the sliding distance wear of the material increases at different rates like this. So, what it is suggesting that 140 ampere current uh, hard facing uh, experiences the lower wear volume for a given sliding distance while 60 ampere uh, hard facing will be leading to the higher wear and uh, 180 ampere current uh, will be leading to the further further higher uh, wear and we will see that uh, this will be the order for decreasing hardness of the surfacing which will be produced. So, this is one way of understanding how does the heat input is affecting the the behavior of the weld surfacing or the layers which are deposited and the way by which the composition is being 
or the quality of the bird surfacing is being compromised. Now, we will see the another aspect related with the dilution. Uh, like if the thick layers are to be deposited then initially we will deposit one pass. In one pass one layer is deposited and this layer first this we can say as a first layer experiences the maximum dilution because it comes uh, filler metal directly comes after melting in comes in contact with the substrate and therefore it causes a maximum change in the composition of the material being applied and that is why we will be having the maximum dilution say it is 20 percent in case of the first layer then to uh, then if the if we are not able to realize the required thickness in one go then we will be applying another layer of the hard facing like this. So, the second layer will be experiencing somewhat lesser dilution because already the surface layer which was deposited was of the same composition and in this case somewhat less dilution will be experienced which may be say like 10 percent and if the third layer is a deposited then again you will see that dilution is further reduced. So, minimum dilution in this case like, like say the 5 percent is observed. So, as we keep on depositing the number of layers one over other we will notice that uh, the dilution level or, or the kind of compositional modification of the surface layers which are taking place that will be reducing. Now, if we cut the section like this and try to measure the hardness from A uh, to the B which is the surface. So, from the substrate to the surface if hardness is measured then what we will notice like this is the uh, interface, interface is here and then this is the subsurface zone means the base metal sub surface zone which is basically substrate and this is the weld surfacing where in we have got one layer up to this and another layer up to this and third layer. So, obviously the hardness of the substrate will be lower like this and uh, then hardness of the as we go in the first layer which was deposited hardness will be increasing gradually uh, then uh, it will be reaching maximum at the top of the first layer and then again there will be a gradual increase in the second layer and then again gradual will be a gradual increase in third layer. So, this gradual increase is attributed to the reducing dilution from interface to the top layer of that uh, uh, to the top uh, of that particular layer which is being deposited. For example, if, the, if this is the one layer which has been applied, so uh, and the, so this is the interface, we will see that note, we will notice that dilution here is maximum then less and somewhat less and further less. So, dilution will be reducing at in each layer on um, approaching towards the upper surface and that is why we will notice that hardness is increasing with because of the reducing dilution level. So, this is the first layer, first layer is offering lower hardness then for the uh, higher hardness uh, in the second layer this is for first layer, this is for second layer and this is for third layer. So, as we keep on increasing the uh, uh, increase in the depositing the number of layers our dilution level keeps on uh, decreasing and uh, that is why we will say that we will notice that uh, compositional modification of the layer being applied is reducing and that in turn you can say in case of the hard facing is increasing the hardness uh, with the increase of the number of layers. So, this is about the uh, variation in hardness which may we say in case of the hardness normally we measure the hardness in terms of the Rockwell hardness on the C scale. So, which may be say like here it may be 20 R C uh, 30 R C or say 35 R C value or H R C value. So, with the in on approaching from the a substrate towards the surface there will be continuous increase uh, um, although this increase will be in steps uh, with uh, and uh, that uh, uh, magnitude of the increase will be changing with the, uh, the layer by layer. 
Uh, now, we will see uh, how does these uh, layers will behave when they are subjected to the abrasive wear test. So, wear resistance uh, in mm cube, uh, sorry, wear uh, loss uh, in mm cube and sliding distance in meter. So, here maybe say 100, 200, 300, 400 like this and here we may have like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 like this and, and, and then we will see that the first layer which was uh, experiencing the maximum dilution had lower hardness will be experiencing the maximum wear, abrasive wear. Second layer will be experiencing somewhat lower, lower abrasive wear and third layer will be experiencing the, this is second layer behavior and this is third layer behavior. What it suggests that uh, when the dilution is more, hardness is less and this will be leading to the increased wear. Uh, while the reverse will be true, a dilution will be minimum for third layer, hardness will be high and this will be reducing the wear of the material. So, uh, this will be inconsistent, uh, these results will also be inconsistency or will be consistent with the hardness variation. This is the direction for increasing hardness variation. and accordingly if we if we plot hardness versus wear plot also so minimum hardness for the first layer the wear will be here then somewhat higher hardness wear will be here and and somewhat further hardness so hardness on the x axis and wear volume in the y axis this will give us idea about that as we increase the hardness value uh, so, with the increase in hardness value of the weld surfacing or hard facing specifically, the wear volume will be decreasing and this is consistent with the established laws like uh, wear is found inversely proportional to the hardness. So, higher is the hardness, lower will be the wear magnitude. Now, uh, we will notice uh, some of uh, the other uh, factors uh, associated with the weld surfacing. What we have seen uh, uh, was about the weld surfacing uh, when weld surfacing is applied using the SMAW process, but we may get the similar kind of trends when other uh, approaches are uh, used. So, let us say uh, uh, when the SMAW process is used for weld surfacing, the process is very simple, even semi skilled worker, semi skilled uh, um, welder can uh, can apply this. The process uses very e simple equipment, so the process is cost effective and cheap. It is very flexible. It can be applied anywhere, not necessary to use and up use it in factory environment. But there are certain issues like uh, uh, SMAW process uses one consumable electrode, which is generally of like say 300 to 4. 100 mm length and this electrode uh, will be connected to the power supply and workpiece will be connected to the will also be connected to the power supply and uh, arc will be established and electrode will be consumed. Since the electrode is consumed in this process, so electrode the process has to be stopped, electrode has to be changed and this uh, makes the process slow. And that is why the deposition rates which are achieved by this process is quite low and uh, that is why for mass production where large uh, areas are to be covered uh, by uh, for the weld surfacing, there this kind of the process may not be suitable. So, there are other alternatives as far as the under the conditions when large surface areas need to be modified by the weld surfacing, there are other options are available, uh, other options which are available like submerged arc welding. This is known as high heat input process and therefore, it allows us the high, very high deposition rate uh, like current values may be like 500,000 amperes. So, this is very good side and it permits the higher deposition rate at the same time it also allows us the use of the strip type of the electrode. In this process basically uh, there is electrode which is bare electrode and usually uh, copper coated 
to avoid oxidation and improve the uh, conductivity. And uh, this electrode uh, is connected to the power supply and work which is connected also to the is also connected to the power supply and uh, arc is striked between the workpiece and uh, or substrate and the electrode and in this process electrode is consumed. But to protect the um, molten metal from the contaminations uh, by the atmospheric gases it is covered under the granular flux uh, heap of the granular flux which melts and provides the provides a protective uh, layer of the molten flux layer. Since the arc is submerged under the flux cover that is why it is called submerged arc welding and uh, this process uh, uses the high deposition rate and uh, that is why it permits us to cover the larger uh, surface areas uh, during the uh, deposition. Now, if we want to understand uh, the performance of such kind of uh, um, the weld surfacing deposited by the SAW process, then we need to see the two aspects. One is dilution, second is cooling rate and third is the bead geometry which uh, we can say that can help us to understand the dilution related aspects. So, uh, since the process is of the high heat input and therefore, dilution levels are very high like 20, 30 percent. So, there will be lot of compositional modification of the weld surfacing which will be developed by this process, but since uh, the uh, high heat input allows the large coverage of the large surface areas at a uh, uh, very fast pace. So, because of the high deposition rates which are possible. Further high heat input also reduces the cooling rate, reduction in cooling rates will be leading to the coarser grain structure, but uh, this uh, low cooling rate may be favorable especially in case of the high hardenability steels because it will be reducing the cracking tendency as well as uh, uh, embrittlement due to the excessive hardening due to the mortistic transformation. Uh, now, if you want to see that how the bead geometry will be affected, so for that we need to see certain effect of certain parameters like welding parameters. Uh, for example, welding current uh, like if this is the surface of the uh, substrate and when the the bead is uh, applied, we will notice that the bead cross section becomes like this uh, and this is the direction for increasing in value of the welding current. So, as we increase the well, um, as we increase the current for depositing the bead on plate, the cross section keeps on increasing. Uh, with the increase of current at the same time depth of penetration is also increasing. So, increase in current increases the cross section, cross sectional area of the bead as well as uh, increases the depth of penetration. So, increase in depth of penetration basically leads to the increased dilution. On the other hand when we increase the voltage so, at low voltage the weld width is limited, weld width increases and weld width further increases with the increase of voltage. So, welding voltage or arc voltage increase of the arc voltage increases the width of the weed which is produced and uh, it does not affect the, the um, it does not affect the uh, depth of penetration. So, the bead width is certainly affected by the increase of the arc voltage. Then third parameter is the speed. So, when the speed is low, we get the much larger weld bead cross section because of the increased H net and cross section will be decreasing with the increase of the speed. So, this is the direction for increasing speed when speed is less for given setting of the V and I the cross section area is more depth of penetration is also more and it will be decreasing with the increase of the welding 
speed uh, now we'll see uh, there is one more aspect uh, uh, to this uh, uh, that is about uh, that if you want any compositional modification compositional modification of the weld surfacing is easier in case of the saw because the constituents that we want to incorporate in the in the in the weld surfacing they are uh, uh, they are uh, incorporated or um, they are uh, brought in with the flux. So, like uh, the silicon, manganese, chromium, molybdenum, etc. can be incorporated in the weld bead uh, uh, by uh, putting them into in powder form with the flux itself. So, they get transferred in course of the weld surfacing process. So, compositional modification of the weld surfacing is easier in case of the SAW process. Uh, so, now I will summarize um, this uh, presentation. In this presentation, basically, I have talked about uh, important technical aspects related with the SMAW and uh, SAW process and the way by which world surfacing using these processes are carried out. Thank you for your attention.